Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time. And we are back with the one and only and legendary investor in real estate agent, Laura Morby. How are you doing, Laura? Hi, good. <laughs> hey, I want to I wanna have just a what if or a, you know, a fun little kind of scenario with you because there's a lot of channels now talking about a real estate collapse and you know the world is ending and you know whatever. <laughs> We're both real estate investors. We buy deals all the time buy and hold, Airbnbs, you know, sub two, all that stuff. Let's just pretend that mm -hmm. for some reason we both thought a 10% correction was coming. And let's put a time frame on this. Let's say between July and December, prices in Arizona, which is the market you're in, fall 10%. Okay. Assuming you thought that, you believed that, what would you do different in your business today? I mean, would you stop and do nothing and just wait till December? Oh my gosh. <laughs> There's so many things that you could do differently. Um, it depends on what facet of the business. So if we're talking fix and flips, I mean, right now, what we're projecting to make is like through the roof, like we've got some triple digit flips. So in that case, we probably wouldn't change much for what we currently own okay. um, because they're already such good deals. Yeah. Um, so we know it's just going to be good no matter what, but maybe we want to factor in maybe a longer hold time. Okay. If you got a, some sort of price correction, you might have less demand. You might be sitting on the market longer, good not point. going under contract day one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, maybe something like that, but for purchasing new ones, we would definitely want to change our mind about what happens. And the good news is I was involved in fixing and flipping during the last recession. So yeah. I know exactly how that works. Yep. And so we actually overestimated the decrease in value because no one has a crystal ball. Mm -hmm. And even if we're expecting a 10% de decrease, you, you want to pad yourself in there. And so you're underwriting your deals in a way where your ARV is now maybe 25% less. Like you really do pad it quite a bit because sure. those are super volatile times. You don't know what's going to happen and you don't want to have six flips going on that you're expecting to make 10% less. Mm -hmm. And then you actually make 25% less or something, or you hold on to them for, you know, three months instead of, you know, after post rehab, sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I got you. Hold on to them for six months, you know, yeah. and so you don't want that. Um, so I, I would say you would, I would be taking a very conservative approach. And the other thing that I wanted to say is don't be afraid of times like that because people yeah. all of a sudden are like, oh, it's going to crash. I'm done. I'm out until it's more stable. It's never stable. It just isn't. It's no. never. And it might be sta not stable in the fact that it's going to go up crazy or it might go down crazy. Yeah. Nothing's ever stable and you don't win if you don't play. And I think you got to keep playing. So you got to keep buying. You got to keep looking. You got to keep whatever. And if you are direct to seller, this is the perfect time. If you, if you are like pretty confident that values are going to start dropping or they are dropping. It is the easiest time to talk to a seller because they know what's going on too. Even if yep. they're not as savvy as you, you can utilize that as a negotiation tactic to get the property for less yep. by saying, I'm not going to be able to sell the house. If I listed it today and it was done, right. great, but I'm, got to have to work on it for the next three months. And in the next three months, I'm expecting this level of decrease. It's only going to be worth this. Right. But you're selling to me now so I can give you a really good number, but yeah. I can't give you a number to where I'm going to lose money. Right. And the thing is, is you can be transparent with sellers. You can say like, I'm not a nonprofit. This is how <laughs> I my family. This yes. is how I put food on the table for my kids. So I can't, as much as like I care about you, I can't overpay for your house because I can't pay to be in business. And yeah. people like people respect that. So yeah, I think there's so many things in there. I just want to hit again uh, that that are dead on. First and foremost, like if you have existing inventory, right? Like you're coming into July. Mm -hmm. uh, what you need to do is you need to you know if you were planning for you know one day listings and all of that, you got to extend that, right? So plan for hold times being longer. I think that was well said. 
And then I loved how you just you just rolled with it and go, okay, now acquisitions, we got to be more conservative, mm -hmm. right? Um, I think those are exactly what I would have hoped to have heard, which is pretty cool. The one thing I would tell you, right, if you're a buy and hold investor, right, so you're not trying to get in, get out, mm -hmm. is um, you need to look at the numbers like cash on cash or what I call yield, mm -hmm. right? Because again, you never know where the bottom is, right? I started buying properties, single family homes during the last crash, all the way down, right? Once once prices got below my original 107K house, I mm -hmm. bought a 90 house, I bought an 80 house, I bought a 70 house, because I didn't know where the bottom was, right? The cheapest house I bought was 28,000 bucks. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, still have it. Uh, so again, you just don't know where the bottom is and you yeah. just got to run the numbers. And the other thing that you that I saw last time, it'd be interesting if you saw it as well, mm -hmm. is while housing values were coming down, rents were actually going up. Yes. Yeah, yes. see, people don't get that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's one of the things I was going to say too, and I was hoping that you'd touch on is the rental market will remain strong, if not get better. Exactly. And so um, worst case scenario, I saw a lot of fix and flippers or people who were more interested in, you know, a short term quick buck, mm -hmm. turning those into rentals and yeah. they make sense. Yeah, so, they, you just had to hold them, right? Oh, I'm yeah. no, congratulations. It's no longer, uh, you know, taxes, active income. It's now a long term hold. Yeah, and that's fine. And, yeah. and it worked out. And, you know, I had some guys who the second the value came back up, they were like, get me out of this. I'm done. <laughs> and we were like around like 2010, 2011. And they were okay. like, please sell this for me. Um, but then, you know, I saw some success stories come out of that too. Like, for instance, I saw a gentleman who bought a apartment complex and then was rehabbing it, planning to sell it for top dollar, listed it for top dollar. Nothing was happening. And so he was like, okay, well, we got to start renting it out. You know, we got to start filling it up. And we filled it up and he had probably two or three rounds of people coming through. And, yeah. um, and then he sold it and he made all of his money back. And it was just, it wasn't what he thought it mm -hmm. was going to be, but he did, it was a profitable, you know, he bought gotcha. it for a decent enough amount of money to where he was cash flowing while he had it rented out for those three years until he was able to sell it. But yeah. Um, it just changes timelines. And so this is one of the, the number one things in real estate. You have to be a chameleon. You have to yes. roll the punches. You cannot stay the same. You have to constantly be learning because things can change in a few months time and you're looking at something totally different. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have the knowledge to figure out how to make it work, you know, yep. I did see some people too who are like, I'm going to dump it. In yeah. this and then you're like, why why would you do that <laughs> that you would be okay yeah and so and i'm sure those guys are kicking their own butts now oh know? yeah <laughs> 10 years 15 years later where they're like i should have just held on to that i would have been fine yeah but instead they threw themselves into sometimes bankruptcy situations yeah and, i saw several of those and last time um yeah and why <laughs> yeah it's like why, why yeah so another couple of things i want to talk about specifically residential here folks is Watch your debt structure, right? Mm -hmm. If you're coming into this with very short-term hard money, you know, 90 days, six months, one year, whatever it is, one of the things you should take advantage of if you do see a price correction is flip, I call it flipping the financing, right? Do your work, you know, improve the junker into, you know, a quality product and then flip the financing, right? If you can't sell it, you know, get out of 10 and 12% money and, and get into four or 5% money. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. yeah. 100%. Yeah. That's another great tip. Absolutely. Yeah. So I think that um, expect the unexpected. Mm -hmm. Be prepared for this. I don't know if it's going to happen now. No. Thanks. No. <laughs> no, I, no, I don't think it's going to happen. This was just a what if because everybody's talking about a collapse. I see a slowdown coming, right? It's. I think we saw all of 2021's appreciation in the first six months. And now it just kind of plateaus, maybe up one or 2%, but yeah, not a crash. But yeah. I figured we should just talk about it. Because again, I've seen a slowdown as a retail agent, though. Yes, I called it. But I, I, the thing is, that's kind of weird. Is like I, you forget, I've been a real estate agent for over a decade, and you still forget these like times of year where things, yeah, get weird, and then you're just like you're kind of sitting there and you're getting like a little nervous, like why is this happening? Yeah, and always in july it yes. slows down and it's because people who have kids especially if you are helping a family mm -hmm. by yourself these people are going on last minute summer vacations exactly they're supplies they're you know i can't tell you how many people i know 
that are gone. Every, like Gone. Just gone. Give or take any day in July, everyone's gone. And especially in Arizona too, it's so hot. Like people are just leaving. And now right. that, you know, it wasn't the same necessarily last year because of right. quarantine and COVID re- travel restrictions. But this year it's like, oh, everything's kind of back to normal. And like people truly are gone. Oh yeah. Like I just listed a, you know, five bedroom house. And I told my seller, I was like, just so you know, it might be dead. Like, and I, I don't know. And it's because- yeah. who's going to buy your house as a family. Exactly. And so what's funny is the second the kids start going back to school, it's like everyone wakes up from the dead mm-hmm. and then it, you know, the market comes back in earnest. And so, um, I've noticed that slowdown, but I think for retail, it's because of like families. Oh, for sure. I mean, yeah. w- most people didn't have a summer vacation or a summer last year, right? It was all weird across the country. Yeah. Now people yeah. are like, I'm out of here. If, if they're not jumping on an airplane, which lots are, they're getting in a car and going somewhere. It's like, I know. I actually had a friend of mine who he is like, he owns a big property management company. He'd be super interest, interesting for you to talk to too. But he and his family were just in California and they were turned away from like six beaches because they were full. Oh, wow. Like, hey, I just guess we'll go to the hotel pool. And I'm like, I was like, oh, so sad for an Arizona <laughs> <laughs> to finally leave. And then you can't yeah. go to the beach, which is what you plan on doing. But that's funny. Um, yeah, it's better to be safe than sorry, I guess. So. Yeah. So again, folks, if you're in the business, certainly if you're being buy and hold, don't get short. Don't let don't let the financing being the problem. Uh, and the other thing I want to talk about is the, the people that I saw in most pain last time mm-hmm. uh, when the market was dropping was the person that got let their ego get in the way. So mm-hmm. they were flipping above the median, which is obviously great when it works, but can become dangerous. And then they were holding on, right? They wouldn't take a 10K drop or 15K drop. They're like, no, my thing's special. I'm the best around, blah, blah, blah. And then the 15K became 40 and then the 40 became 80. And pretty soon they were done, right? So sometimes you got to let it go fast. Yeah, I completely agree. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's, that's one hard, hard, that's a hard thing that like, even I have a hard time stomaching because I saw that so much, like where we're, you know, we could do close to a million dollar flips. And to me, it's just not interesting because mm-hmm. I saw that happen so much. And oh, it's like, yeah. I have like secondhand trauma from watching that. Happen. Oh, me too. I was like, oh, I will. Yeah. yeah. So my median, I don't know whatever your median is, but my median is like 350. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's 380. Um, yeah. I, I won't, I won't touch a something 500 and above. I don't, to be honest, a lot of times there's no point because you're going to have number one, you're, the amount of cash you're tying up. Yeah. You could go do three or four little guys. Yeah. Fast, and then and then the time and then your and buyers and these the like, buyers so picky. So picky because and, and as they should be. They're yeah. spending that kind of money. You know, you, you expect it. But um that's a funny thing too that I've noticed while we're filming the show is I think that that's kind of one of the things that they were like, oh like none of these are like really that cool. yeah. <laughs> it's and not like, four thousand square feet. Come on, Laura. Yeah, why, like, and, and the things that we're putting in, we're not, you know, we're not hiring a designer and having, you know, uh, like expensive, you know, English you know, cabinets. You're you not know, doing travertine, uh, you know, yeah, 24 inch and, travertine. And, and those are so fun to watch as yeah. female on TV. But then, like, I honestly like don't like watching that stuff anymore because I'm like dumb. Like, why can't we? I don't know, but then I'm also like, that's not like um, a great business move. And so I guess that's one of the things too that I think people think like, oh, when you flip houses, it's like really cool, like Joanna Gaines. And it's like every yeah. house is a million dollar house. And it's like, no, a lot of them no. are kind of ugly. No. And you know what? The uglier and the smellier, the more money you make. So. Absolutely. It's the smell, right? That's that's the thing for me. It's like, oh, I'm not going into that one. Let's buy it. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody else will clean it up. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool, Laura. Do me a favor. How, if somebody wants to buy some property or sell some property in Arizona, how do you want them to reach out to you? Um, you can call or text me 480-717-2070 um, or my Instagram for Morby No Spaces. Yeah. Do yourself a favor. Follow Laura Morby on Instagram and you'll, you'll smile every day. Thanks, no, Laura. Thank you. Thank you. Mm-hmm.